Animating the card domain was a bit trickier. I needed a linker that was rigid and held the card domain in place when APAP1 was folded, was able to move freely when APAP1 was unfolded, and was flexible yet tethered on both ends when the multiple APAP1 cards formed the ring above the base of the apoptosome. To achieve this, three types of curves were created to control the different modes of movement. A non-dynamic curve is used to keep the card domain rigidly in place when APAF1 is folded. A dynamic end hair curve that was tethered on one end, the end attached to the body of APAF1, and was loose on the other end, the end attached to the card domain, was used when APAF1 was unfolded but not attached to other APAF1 monomers. This allows the card domain to move freely above the rest of APAF1. Finally, when the APAF1 monomer is together with six other APAF1 monomers to form the complete apoptosome, another dynamic end hair curve was used. This curve appears to be tethered on both ends so that the card domain forms a ring, but the 10 amino acid connector is still able to move. These curves are dynamically constrained to the card ring so that they can move in response to the card ring as it bobs above the base of the apoptosome. I'm able to switch between the three different curves using blend shapes. Similarly to how polygon objects can be animated using blend shapes, different curves can be blended in the same way. The three different dynamic curves are used as blend targets for a master curve, and the influence of each curve can be turned on or off using the weight sliders. When APAF1 is alone as a monomer, the card domain is dynamically constrained to the end of the dynamic end hair curve, so that it can move freely on the end of the 10 amino acid linker. But when APAF1 is in the apoptosome complex, and the card domain needs to be rigidly attached to the ring, I can change the dynamic constraint to keep the card domain in place in the ring. Switching the dynamic constraint locks the card in place. Lastly, in the discussion of APAF1 dynamics, let's take a look at the completed animation of APAF1 unfolding. If you watch the APAF1 monomer again, before it is bound to cytochrome C, we didn't let the monomer simply stay in its folded conformation. That's because there's no indication that APAF1 is locked in its fully folded conformation before it binds to cytochrome C. Molecules rarely stay in one conformation and often test out a range of motions. I prepared several different degrees of APAF1 breathing and sent sample videos to an expert in apoptosome assembly from Boston University. With the expert's advice, we settled on this degree of breathing as a resting state for the APAF1 monomer. Only after cytochrome C binds does the APAF1 monomer stay in its fully unfolded conformation, as the primary scientific literature suggests.